welcome to the skating lesson. I'm Dave Lees, and I'm thrilled to welcome 2006 World Junior Champion Drew Meekins. Drew, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to be here. <laughs> Let me just explain a little bit of your background. So you are a 2006 Junior World Champ. Now, is it Junior World Champ or World Junior Champ? Because I feel like the ISU uh, switched this on us <laughs> at some point. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I actually don't know what it is officially now, but I remember when you know we were signing papers afterward it's world junior world junior pair champions of 2006 i think is how it was worded back then <laughs> okay now you're also a coach and choreographer in colorado springs you work yes. alongside tom zakrychek and delilah sappenfield so how does this work now how do you split your time how does <laughs> oh this go yeah yeah i mean it's definitely difficult um things can get pretty hectic and busy i, I mean Obviously, I was a pair skater. I love pair skating, so it's great to work with Delilah um, and, you know, get to teach pairs and work with pairs. Um, but, I mean, I also always have loved single skating, I mean, just as a skater and a fan. And, um, you know, so I, I love the work I do with Tom. Um, of course, you know, choreography is a big thing that I do. So it's really interesting to get to work with both singles and pairs because, you know, dynamically it's different when you're doing choreography for them. No, had you worked with Tom? Because I know you're from Boston and you skated pairs mm -hmm. there with Julia Vlasov and then yes. you moved over to Colorado. So had you ever actually worked with Tom Zakrychek? Um, I took a few lessons with him back when I was still competing. Um, I didn't take a ton because um, I had most of my jumps by the time I got to Colorado. So like my work on singles was mostly just like maintaining what I had. But, you know, I was really curious about Tom. Um, you know, I've been friends with a lot of his students and... Um, you know, of course, I've seen like all the progress that he's made with, you know, a ton of different skaters. So I think mostly like when I took lessons from Tom, I was like um, more kind of interested in like, you know, what it was all about, I guess. You know, I, I had Russian training, so I, I guess that like my technique might be a little bit different than his. But I just was curious about, you know, what his technique was and how he worked and stuff. So I think that was probably like a bigger motivation to take lessons from him than actually like, wanting to improve. <laughs> well, what is it like working with Tom Z? Do you, do you like, are you a part of the charts? Are you tracking the charts? Are you doing the charts? Does he track you? I guess what is happening there? <laughs> I don't know if he tracks me. That's kind of a scary question. <laughs> um, no, I mean, you know, I, I love how organized Tom is. I, you know, I, I really relate to that analytical process that he has implemented um, and certainly I help with, um, you know, tracking program run throughs and calculating percentages on elements so that, you know, Tom and me and the rest of his team can strategize and make the best decisions for our athletes to have success. Okay. Now you're also Drew of Sarah and Drew on Ice Network and you've yes. written from Ice Network, I think almost <laughs> since the beginning. So how did that come about? Yeah, um, it was kind of a weird thing. Um, you know, I've been friends with Sarah, uh, forever really at this point, um, and, uh, of course, she's an author and illustrator and um, journalist. And so I think it was in 2008, I, um, I had qualified for nationals, but um, Julia and I had just broken up. And so, um, honestly, like, we kind of hatched it as, like, a scheme to get me to nationals because, <laughs> um, you know, I wanted to network and I wanted to, you know, talk with coaches and, you know, think about potential um, girls that I could try out with and things. So... Um, it was really like a, a way of making that happen in a sense. And then also, of course, it was like a fun new project that, you know, kind of, I guess, kept me interested and lifted my spirits back then. <laughs> so were, um, you, were you a pair boy who showed up at Nationals like in the shirt and tie? Because whenever someone's looking for a partner <laughs> at Nationals, Matt Blackmer or whoever, they always have like the shirt right. and tie on that you know that they would never be wearing in their normal life. Was that you? Yeah, the you, you got you to dress for the part for sure. I, I mean... I don't know if I'm, I've never really been like a shirt and tie kind of guy, but I guess I did my version of that. Okay. Now I'm going to be super curious because you almost had a moment last week. I know that you <laughs> did Vincent Zoe's short program this year and the ISU feed actually credited to David Wilson, but <laughs> um, talk about that. Cause this is one of your first, I would imagine major, major choreographic jobs. He's obviously someone who's probably going to potentially make the final group at nationals this year, which is, Definitely probably a moment in your career. So I guess talk about put that putting that short program together. Yeah, I mean, well, uh, you know, Vincent is an amazing athlete. Um, I worked with him basically all last year and just helped refine the movement in his programs, work on his movement technique in general. And, um, you know, I, I love um, 
actually that we had that time before I actually did choreography for him because it really helped me get to know him. Um, it also helped me, you know, develop him in a way, like help him work on certain weaknesses and help him em emphasize certain strengths. And so when we did the, the short program, it was really a pretty like strategic um, piece of choreography because um, we tried to highlight those strengths and, um, you know, I really chose what kind of things I wanted in there. So it was super fun to see him. Um, I saw him compete at Glacier um, earlier this summer, but it was super fun to see him compete it um, in Japan at, you know, at his first international of the year and, and skate it so well and put up a big score. I think that's like one of the biggest junior short scores ever, if not the biggest one on Junior Grand Prix. Um, but in, in any event, it was a great score. And so it was, it was a, a really a fun experience. And I'm, uh, I made a joke on Facebook, like, I'm, I'm happy to be confused with David Wilson. I don't <laughs> think that anyone can complain about that. So now talk about you said it was strategic, because I noticed that it looks like you were trying to bring some personality and drama out of Vincent. Yeah, and he does the Jeff Buttle, like outside to inside spread eagle moment <laughs> in the program. So yeah, yes. talk about what your strategy was there. I mean, yeah, I think, you know, Vincent's strengths are he um, he's so expressive, actually, like he he can show emotion on his face really well. Um, and so I wanted to highlight that I wanted to give him a really emotional piece of music where he could relate to the music. Um, you know, I also think he's a he's a very dynamic skater in the sense that he can use his core body really well. He's good at contracting and side bending and different twists and stuff. So there's a lot of that sort of, you know, contemporary dance style of movement in the program. Um, I also think he's very exciting. So the program builds, right? It builds and builds and builds really kind of until that spread eagle moment. That's like one of the highlights of the program for me. So, uh, that was also, um, part of the strategy. Okay. So now do you work, do you have it done ahead of time? Cause the first time I ever saw you in the flesh, you were standing in front of like the boards in Colorado. And like, I think looking at yourself in the reflection and trying to choreograph for someone for about 45 minutes was, we were, I think we were filming with Alexa. And you're yeah. Like, <laughs> so do you do that ahead of time? So or how does this, what is like your process there? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm like definitely more of like a cerebral choreographer. Like I know some people are, um, more impulsive and they're inspired that way. I'm like the total opposite. Um, I, um, I like to do like a lot of research for like what my inspiration is for someone, what my inspiration for the style of movement is. And that could involve like a number of things. It could be like watching different dance companies that I'm inspired by. It could be looking at art or listening to music. Um, certainly I, I like to, you know, I am a very strategic person. So I, I think about, you know, what, what movements could really highlight this skater? Like, how do I want to show this skater? And I, I actually like make lists, like I'll write things down. This is maybe why I relate to Tom Z. I write things <laughs> down on my, um, on my computer, my phone. And I usually have like three or more pages of like notes, you know, before I go into a choreographic project. Um, and like you said, like I also, you know, I, 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 I like to move, so I'll, I'll get on the ice and actually like skate, you know, I mean, I can't really skate that well anymore, but I'll skate, um, you know, some of the phrases out that I'm kind of playing with and that kind of thing. So you said you made a list. What was on your list about Alexa Semeca? Because that's, or Alexa Kinnearum now, because that's one of my Kinnearum. favorite personalities. You did her program for nationals last year. I know that you work with them alongside Delilah. So what was on your list when you tried to choreograph for Alexa? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I think, you know, with Alexa and Chris, um, for, um, well, like when I did, I did their exhibition program last year that they did at nationals, um, you know, I, I've worked with them sort of off and on for a long time. Um, and, but when I started working with them, we worked kind of exclusively in the dance studio. Um, and, uh, I, I love, you know, sort of modern and contemporary dance. So that's kind of like more of the you know, kind of style of movement I was doing with them. So I think I like had this vision for them where I, I saw them moving in that way, like the way that we were in the studio. So I really tried to, again, like highlight um, some of these different, you know, body shapes and this more like softer lyrical um, feeling. I mean, their, their programs last year were great and their long program was so strong. It was like a sprint from, you know, the beginning to the end. So I kind of went like a different approach and like tried to highlight another side of their movement um capabilities that they weren't you know showing at that time whose idea was it to show her abs in the in the costume <laughs> <laughs> you, 
I mean, <laughs> I don't know if I can take credit for that, but I think uh, it's always a good decision with her. <laughs> yeah. So who else are you working with now? I know that you posted on Facebook that Tessa Hong did get a junior grand pre assignment. I guess talk about some of your students right now. I know that you were just an uh, in Utah for the first time, you said. Um, yes, my last first trip week. to Utah. Yeah, so yeah. talk, brag about your students a little bit. How did they do? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was, you know, it was fun. Um, it was a, definitely a busy week. Uh, I had a novice pair, um, Ainsley Peterson and Christopher Ogren, and uh, they won the novice pair portion uh, with personal best. And um, uh, Tom and Becky Calvin and I had three junior men there. Um, Camden Polkinen was first. Um, he was also just assigned Estonia, so we're really excited about that. Um, and then we had uh, Chase Belmontes, who finished fourth, and TJ Nyman, who finished sixth. So now, do you get to go to Estonia? How does that get determined? Who goes there? <laughs> it's, you know, it's always like a, like, it's like a massive, like, scheduling, um, like, conversation, really, because, you know, t you know, Tom has some commitments with the Autumn Classic, that's next week. And then of course there's like regionals, you know, are just like right around the corner and you know, a lot of, you know, I think the majority of our kids are going to regionals. So that's like a really big thing. Um, so Becky is, uh, going to, at this point, at least I can say Becky is going. Um, and I think that that's it. I think we're just going to send one coach, even though we have two students there. Now, how is Tessa Hong skating? Because I know when I saw her, she looked like she was getting all of her triple triples and she got injured right before the qualifying season last season. So I guess where yeah. is she at now? Because we haven't really seen her in probably about a year. Yeah, well, I mean, she's she's skating great. I'm, you know, she um, did really well at Broadmoor Open this year. She won the senior ladies um, competition. She was, I think, second in the short, first in the free skate and first overall. Um, and she had some, you know, pretty, pretty seasoned competitors there like Mariah Bell and Amber Glenn and, um, you know, some really great skaters. So, um, she landed a triple, triple in the short and two in the free skate. So she, she's in great shape. Um, and I think we're really excited for her to have this opportunity in Estonia. Well, speaking of seasoned competitors in the international competition, it was kind of Satoko Miyahara and it seemed like everyone else. I think she was expected to yeah. come in, skate two clean programs, and she did do that. Yes. What did you make of her? Because you got to see her live. I was watching her, obviously, on Ice Network. So good I mean, she is just like so stunning. I, I think I was hypnotized from like the first moment of the program to the end. Um, I mean, just, you know, the full package, the jumps are just effortless. She like seems to float in the air and her like skirt accentuates that factor. It's like, I don't know, like maybe you couldn't see it on TV, but the way her skirt moves in the air is like fascinating. I could watch that. Like someone needs to make like a, like a boomerang Instagram about that because it's, it's like gorgeous. Um, but I mean, she just is so lovely and, um, I really, I really liked her program. I love the choreography and the long program. Mm -hmm. I know that she used the planets and then Star Wars yes. and my music yeah. nerd friends will say, well, John Williams stole that yes. from Hulse anyway. <laughs> I guess, what did you make of that choice? I don't even, I didn't even realize it was Star Wars when I see the program. I mean, I think it's like, uh, you know, uh, uh, I think it's a kind of a brilliant choice because like, it, you know, the Star Wars was, theme was based off of the planets. So I think, you know, that really fulfills like the music geek in all of us. And you know, it's kind of like a cute little subtlety about how the music is edited. Uh, you know, I think the Star Wars music like can be overpowering, but the way it was cut where it just kind of comes in for the, you know, climax at the end, I think is a really great way to use it. I, I loved it. I thought it was great. So I think last year she was doing so well until the world championships. And then when all the ladies were next to each other, it seemed like they dinged her jumps a little bit more compared to yeah. the other ladies. And some people didn't see it coming. I guess it looks like she has worked on it a bit in the off season. She got one under rotation here, but did you notice a difference in her jumps from last year to this year? I mean, yeah, I, I think like, you know, just, you know, my impression watching her was definitely that the jumps looked stronger and bigger. So like I, you know, I, I felt confident about the rotations of like nearly every single jump that I saw from her all week. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest changes everyone saw is Mariah Bell. You know, finishing yeah. second place overall here. She had just moved um, to California. Mm -hmm. And I guess, how long do you think it even takes to notice a difference in a coaching change? She probably hasn't even worked with her new coach that much. <laughs> so, yeah. I, and he wasn't even there. So I guess how much, you know, how long does it really take when you switch coaches to really have that mm -hmm. impact? I mean, I think the, like, the, 
the answer is sort of a complex one. Like every skater is probably different. And like the reason that a coaching change can have an impact can be like a variety of things. Right. So like one example is like, it could be mental, right? Like if you, and I, I don't know anything about her yeah. situation, so I, I can't comment on that specifically, but like if you were unhappy or something, right. And then like just moving to a new location and having a new coach, like that could like change your mental state really quickly. And then that of course can have an effect on how you compete. Right. Um, so there are things like that that you can see instantly. Um, of course, you know, most like technical changes take a while, right? Like mm -hmm. you have to create a technique and then, you know, you know, keep stimulating in your body to acquire the muscle memory to be able to reproduce it under pressure. So, you know, things like that obviously take longer, but I do think like there is something to like an effect being instantly for some people. I mean, she looked great there. I, um, yeah, I mean, I love, love her programs. I saw them seen them a few times this year. Um, and she just skated really well with a lot of confidence, even though her hair was caught in her dress or something <laughs> like that. Could you see it caught in her dress? I guess when you were watching, I, yeah. Well, we were like trying to figure out, we were like, oh, there's like a lot of the like same arm movement. Like, you know, I was like, that, that like doesn't strike me as Roheen. But um, then we figured out that she was like trying to get her hair out of her dress. And then, I, I mean, it looked like that at least. And then like at some point it looked like her dress started to come undone. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it was, <laughs> we definitely could notice it for sure. <laughs> I guess there have been so much, uh, I think, shifting with the American ladies. Paulina has been injured. She was in a show not mm -hmm. jumping. Uh, you know, certain of the American ladies in the Grand Prix may or may not have quit. Mariah actually doesn't have Grand Prix at this point. Do you expect right. to see her on the Grand Prix? It seems like a lot could happen between now and when the Grand Prix actually take yeah, place. Yeah, well, I mean, she certainly has had a good season, and she looks like if she were to be on the Grand Prix, she looks like she could hold her own. I mean, you know, I, I have no idea. I think anything can happen, so uh, certainly it's a possibility, right? Yeah, she should keep doing those run-throughs. She should. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, you should work on the hair, too. Yeah, work on the hair and the dress situation. <laughs> I guess, did any of the other ladies stand out to you there? Um, you know, those the top two really kind of set themselves apart for sure. Um, uh, I, you know, I think I was happy to see, um, Karen Chen skate pretty well, um, you know, and, and, uh, and finish high. So, um, she stood out in that way, I guess, but it was really, you know, really the top two are the ones who left a lasting impression. So you did Vincent's short program to the writing on the wall. At what point yeah. did you find out that Jason Brown would also be doing that for the short program? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't find out until Lombardia, actually. I mean, even though Jason is in Colorado most of the time, uh, he does not at the World Arena, and I'm not really in Monuments. So, um, yeah, you know, it's funny because um, Vincent competed against Jason in at Glacier Falls, and Jason had a different short there. And, um, you know, so, you know, it's funny, like, when, I, when we picked Vincent's music, like, we knew it was, like, a contemporary piece of music, and a very popular one. And I think whenever you do that, you like know there's a risk, right, that someone else might choose it because that's like the nature of something being popular. Um, and then I, I think, you know, it's funny because I thought we were in the clear. I was like, yes, we did it. Like no <laughs> other like, you know, high level man like has the music this year. So I was kind of a little shocked to see um, that he had switched to it. But, you know, it is, um, it, it's not unheard of, right? I mean, people have had the same music before. I mean, Battle of the Carmens and so on. And so, you know, it is what it is. I, I think that in my opinion, like they do it differently enough. You know, Jason is Jason and Vincent is really showcasing like a new style that he has. So I think that they, you know, they both can stand out with it. And uh, I, you know, as Vincent's choreographer, I, I don't think that it affects him really at all. It's kind of like the Joshua Ferris, like singer songwriter piece of music of the year for people to use. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I guess, did you see Jason land the quad in the practice? I know that he's been landing them. He did them at Champs Camp. And there's actually yeah. a video of him doing it in the mm -hmm. short on YouTube that people are debating. Yeah. Was it around? I noticed that his attempt looks far more credible and far more aggressive than it has in the past. I guess, did you see a difference? you know, in his quads. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I didn't see him land it, um, in that run through. I actually saw the video though. Okay. Um, you know, in, in my opinion, like I've no question that he lands it clean probably often, you know, that, I mean, I think what you're saying is right. Like this technique 
looks pretty solid in it. The way he approaches it seems like he has confidence in his ability to do it. So, I mean, my assessment of it would be like that. Yeah, he, I'm sure he does it a lot. I don't have that feeling before. Like I used to have the Johnny Weir feeling when you're going into it and you're like, everyone is tensing up and you know it's <laughs> going to be fake out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the fake out of the quad. He hasn't landed it yet. He did say that he landed it in the warm up. Do you expect to see that landed suit in competition for him? I guess he's a different kind of competitor than some of the other yeah. men. Some where Vincent and Nathan seem to go out and just kind of like are very, very aggressive in a different way than Jason. It seems. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think that what you typically see is that it takes, you know, the men a few times to try the quad and land it in competition. I think that's one of the reasons why it's like important that you know, you try it early in the season. So I'm, you know, it's great for him and his team that they're like having him try it consistently this year. I think that is really helpful and, you know, sort of follows like the trend of what you see. Um, you know, like, I, I know I said this like a few times now, but like everyone's different. So um, it's hard to say for sure, but I think he's probably on the right track with it. I wouldn't be surprised if he lands it in competition soon. So then when he lands the quad, does Tom then have Max drill the quads more the next day? <laughs> I think Tom has Max drill the quads no matter what. I think if no one was doing quads, Max would still drill the quads. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, what did you think of Adam here? I think both Jason and Adam are in a similar position where they're kind of the more complete skaters. There are a lot of junior men coming up that are doing the quads but maybe don't have what they have in the spins and the steps and the footwork. So what did you make of Adam's performance here? Really strong short, not as strong free skate. Yeah, I mean, the... You know, I, I had seen a video of his short from, I think it was like Cactus Classic or something. And like, I'll be perfectly honest, I wasn't like sure about it. I was like, I'm not, you know, I, it was kind of a bad video too. So you couldn't really see like a lot of the nuances and stuff. So I was like, okay, like, you know, I want to see that in person because I'm not really like, I don't, I'm not sure if I get it yet. But um, seeing it in Salt Lake City, like it was, it was amazing. Like he was in character and like selling it and owning it from the moment he stepped on the ice and I just loved it like it was like a standout program he looked fantastic um so you know it was really great impression after the short I mean the long like obviously he struggled in it um it's a different kind of program you know it's it's um it's super you know super modern even for skating um and I think you know when you have like a when you're using like one piece of music that's like a little bit more obscure and like isn't like super strong, I think you have to really sell it, right? Like you have to you have to really like be on top of your execution. And so when you have struggles, you know, with some of the technical elements, I think that the performance can turn out a little bit flat. However, if you know he were to like smoke that program and skate it clean, it could have a totally different impression, right? So well in the past, you know, we really had like the velvet onesies. And now Adam really seems like he's brought in the mesh. So are you team mesh? Are you into this look, I think, for your skaters? <laughs> I mean, I think, I think I'm team mesh for Adam. I mean, he, okay. he, he looks good in it and he, yeah. you know, he can own it. I, I'm not, you know, I don't know if those are his, his final costume choices for the year or not. But, um, but yeah, I'm definitely, I'm he definitely. He knows he looks good in it. Yeah, he's, yeah. Uh, he's found his look. I guess, are you a fan of the... The one choreography piece where he's driving the car. Yeah, that's... I mean, yeah, yeah. I think I'm a fan of it as long as you execute it, right? Like, yeah. and, you know, I, there's one thing about that I know about Adam is that, like, he is, like, not going to pull back from executing something well. Like, anything that's in his program at the end of the season is going to be, like, full 100% execution. So, yeah. I definitely agree with that because when I first saw the Beatles program, I thought I, I don't know about I don't know about this, but I think by nationals and worlds he made everyone believe it, especially mm -hmm. as he developed that yeah. program. I think conversely, one skater who I think needs to make us believe it more or himself is Takahiro Miura, because it seems like we have seen him skate so many times. He has good technique, but he doesn't seem to have that same ability to kind of land the jumps without the step out or to really make people watch or stand out. And totally. Again. What do you make mm. of him? Because it seems like he's been around, you know, for quite some time now. Not yeah, I mean, it's funny, like, he, he skated really well, um, you know, in Salt Lake City. Um, I think it's probably really hard, like, being in Japan and not being, like, the top one or two guys, right? Like, their, like, men's field is, like, as deep as ours, if not deeper, right? So... I mean, you got to really... A little bit deeper, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or at least at the top end, yeah. Well, at the top, yeah, yeah. for sure. 
Um, so you got to really stand out. And so I think, you know, for whatever reason, like he hasn't been able to like, I think stay in people's minds, you know, um, he's obviously got everything he needs, right? Like he can do, you know, two quads in the free skate and he's got, you know, certainly like unique and interesting choreography. Um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to say what he needs to do. Maybe just more of it or more consistently. Yeah. Well, I think two people that really stood out to me were Madison Hubble and Zach Donahue. <laughs> I just saw them train in Montreal a couple weeks ago. You got, they're the first U.S. ice dance team of kind of the big three when you consider Chalk and Bates and the Shibutanis that are competing this season. What did you make of their programs in person? Because they are taking the big risk by doing their short dance to hip hop, yeah. with all the music edits. Did it work for you? Um, it, <laughs> did it work for me? I mean, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a cool program. Um, I kind of feel like that's the kind of program that like could go viral with like, with like the general public in a sense, because it like has all these like throwback songs that like everybody loves and like the editing is, you know, very quirky and creative. And so like, I feel like, you know, the general population could like really latch on to that and get into it. It's really different for skating. You know, hip hop is, I think, as a choreographer, for me, like hip hop is like so hard to execute on the ice. Um, the movements are so like, they're so short and so small. And like skating is this like typically this like huge grand thing where your movements are humongous and you're filling this, you know, ice rink that seats 30,000 people, right? So, um, you know, you again, you like really have to do it well. Um, it's fun to see them to do to see, see them do a new style that's for sure <laughs> how much was she selling it because in practice she sold it the entire time uh, oh she, they, she definitely sold it yeah, yeah. she definitely sold it I, and think, I, I love the ending i love how unexpected unexpected it is yeah i thought i thought that their free their free dance looked much more ready for competition than their short dance did just because of how you know intricate that program is and how you have to be on the beats for the patterns and everything i thought that the free dance is much more their style and that the short dance yeah. is something that maybe they'll have that viral moment later in yeah. the season. I guess, what did you think of their free dance? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, like, if I'm being honest, I think, like, short dances are typically, like, less interesting to me than free dances. I mean, I, I love free dances, probably my favorite event in, like, an entire skating competition. Mm -hmm. um, and I just love the creativity and freedom you have, right? Um, I feel like short dances sometimes, like, they can look like Frankenstein where you're like trying to make something fit to something it's not. Um, and that's just, you know, the rule sometimes. Right. But, um, there, you know, Maddie and Zach's free dance, I just, uh, I thought it was amazing. I mean, just breathtaking and really like one of those programs that, you know, I, I think is going to be really memorable if they're skating it this well, this early in the season, I could really see them having a good year with it. I, I would watch that program, you know, 10 times in a row after seeing it the first time it was, it was great. Yeah. What do you think they need to do? I think, in my opinion, I was trying to talk to Marie France about this, and I think the only, it's just like they need a little bit more, I guess, speed to really compete with the top teams because they've been around for such a long time and they're trying to, you know, change mm -hmm. the impression and the judges that they have in their minds of them. And to me, it definitely looks like the free dance could do that, and they have to make, I think, a statement to compete with the other top yeah. teams. But I think with this yeah. free dance, it definitely seems like it could. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I yeah, the one the one thing I that comes to mind is speed, right? I mean, I think. But it's kind of like, you know, the eternal answer, like always more speed is, yeah. is better and more exciting, right? So I think that could certainly help. You don't want to be a slow moving glacier out there. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. I think they need to go for the makeout at nationals, though. If all is well, <laughs> just go for it. I don't just care. Go, just go full on. <laughs> yes. But I, I, one thing I thought is interesting is that they train with two teams that were third and fourth here with... Um, Olivia Smart and Andrea Diaz and then uh, Mitch and Alex and those two teams were finishing very close together here and I wanted to ask you about Smart and Diaz because it's their second competition together and they had some weird hiccups where he, she was skating around him and they almost like hit each other on the side right they didn't do a lift at one point it just did not go up so having good pairs I know you didn't do ice dance but how long does it take to like get used to each other when you're competing and your rhythm and how long does that not feel strange for? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, probably a pretty long time in a way. Um, and the other thing is like when you're competing, it's like all the things come out, you know, like, so being, you know, that it's, you know, their second competition, as you said, like 
you know, it's not surprising that, you know, under pressure and, and, you know, it's a new environment, all these things, like you might be like, you know, just microscopically off on your timing on something. So that's like one of the things that I think when you're like a super seasoned team who's been together for, you know, several years, like you kind of know what to expect in that way and you know how to handle it and make the same micro adjustments. But when you're a new team, like you just don't have that experience, right? So I think, you know, that could be like maybe one of the things that we saw from them. Um, I would say, you know, it probably takes, I mean, re really it, it takes, I think, several competitions at least, right, before you like start to figure that out. Did you have any hot mess moments in any of your new partnerships ever? <laughs> I, <laughs> I had hot mess moments even in my old partnership. <laughs> so. <laughs> Were you faster under pressure or slower under pressure? Um, I'm like actually like I'm like a super even keeled person and I was like you're very Colorado even. you're just yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah like I was pretty I was pretty good at like at keeping pace um as far as like you know what I normally practice um I think for me it was just like I just feel like you know I feel like in, when you're in juniors in general like all this weird stuff happens all the time it's like you know the rink might be slanted or like you you know one time I was like late for my six minute warm-up because there was no like I didn't know what time it was and I like I like missed the first few seconds of it and my coach almost murdered me <laughs> rightfully so over it but like I you know when you're junior like all these things happen Wait, how do you miss the six this is your big moment was this like your first junior grand prix like how are you missing um, the warm-up I don't know if I should admit this on camera um <laughs> But it was a, uh, it was a, it was a um, junior international, and um, you know, it was like it was before like we had phones that worked internationally. So I, I like literally didn't know what time it was. There was no clock and like no phone to remind me. Didn't have a watch, whatever. Um, and so I thought I had more time than I did. And then like my coach came running into the dressing room and was like, your warm up just started. I mean, luckily I wasn't far away, but like normally I'd be the kind of person who'd be there like 15 minutes early and like, you know, soaking in all the energy. But that was uh, definitely a moment that was difficult. Which Junior Grand Prix events did you do? Because they're always in very obscure former Soviet republics, I think is like <laughs> how I like my Junior Grand Prix. Yeah, Which ones I did agree. you go to? Yeah. Um, my first one was in Serbia, and then I went to Ukraine. I did the final in Helsinki. Uh, the next, uh, and then I did Junior Worlds in Canada. The next year I went to um, Andorra. And then after that, I went to um, Zagreb, Croatia, and then I did the final in the Czech Republic and Junior Worlds in Slovenia. Okay. So you won Junior Worlds in Slovenia, or did you win? Yes. And it in was, Slovenia. It was basically you and Kim Yuna, right? That was the start. It was, made. yes. So do you well, consider I'll... yourself on par with her? I mean, you did win Junior Worlds together. You know, <laughs> basically, you're the same person. <laughs> you want to consider that? I'll go with that. I don't know if I'm bold enough to say that. I, I should also mention, though, that um, there were uh, two other uh, teams of note there. Tessa and Scott and Merrill and Charlie um, were also oh, yeah. first and second that year. Yeah. Who, what junior man won that year in 06? That would have been... I think it was Kazuka. Okay. All right. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I want to ask you about junior pairs because you obviously won junior worlds. I feel like you have no idea what's going to happen until the pairs turn senior. So <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you about the junior pair here won by 23 points. Yes. Do She's like 15. He's 20. They skate pretty well together. Does this mean anything for their senior careers? At what point has a junior pair like officially made it to where you know something drastically bad isn't going to happen in the transition to senior? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a good question. I mean, I I think you know the thing you you see in juniors, especially with the pairs, is like the you know the girls are relatively young still, so you know they can grow, right? And I think also like people you know can change a lot as far as like what their skill sets are. So I think that's like the big risk. I mean, um, they're a fantastic team. I remember seeing them at junior worlds and like my jaw dropping because they just were, you know, so interesting. I love how much he like sells the program. Like I can't take my eyes off him when he's skating. Um, but you know, he, he, he looks probably on the smaller side. Yeah. So, um, certainly like that thought, you know, crossed my mind. <laughs> how tall is he? Um, 
I don't think he's six feet. You know, I, I mean, I wasn't ever on the ice with him, obviously, but I don't think he's taller than six feet, if I had to guess. Um, and I think more than that, though, he's he's thinner, right? Like, he's not like one of those, you know, uh, sometimes you see those Russian pair boys where, like, they could lift me with one hand. They're, like, so massively strong. <laughs> what is the ideal height? Like, 6'1", six 6'2"? Six I think so. Because yeah, you're considered, you, know, you were considered short when you were in pairs, but yes, you're not short yeah. in real life. So I right, guess yeah, what, yeah. No, yeah. well, I like still think that I'm short in real life just because of like my pair career. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like in like the I, normal world you seem like normal man height. So like what? Yeah, I, what is like what height are we going for here? What is the ideal? Well, I mean, I think one of the things you've seen like with the international judging system is like you get more points for some of these elements that like require a bigger size difference, like, you know, the quad twist or the triple twist that's like humongous, right? So, I mean, like in the last like 10, 15 years, you've really seen that change and, and be valued and you like need a significant height difference to be able to do those things. I mean, that's just like physics, right? So I think, you know... Um, you know, I, I think we're talking like about a foot, right? So I think most pair girls are under 5'3", which means that you need the guys over six feet, right? So yeah, we need some of the American ladies on the shorter side to team up because we were always trying to find you and Rockney partners. And it was just I know. a real challenge. <laughs> it was like the national like, you know, mission here. But let's talk about some of the junior ladies because the Russian ladies all came to compete with one another here. Uh, mm. Polina Serskaya finished first. I guess, what did you make of her skating? The one thing that really stood out to me is that she has really open elbows when she jumps, and it seems like her legs are good, but the arms can be all over the place at times in the, her jumping. I guess, so what did you make of her? And, yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I think um, I was certainly struck by, like, how massive her jumps were, yes. like the triple lutz, triple toe, like she could jump over me. Um, which probably, you know, relates to what you're seeing is that maybe she's not like as tight in her upper body as like some other people who aren't jumping that high. Um, however, like her jumps, you know, well, the free skate was a little bit more rough for her, but in the short, especially like just spot on gorgeous jumps. Um, you know, there's so many good Russian ladies. It's like it, and this is like a, a weird, like side effect of them all being so good, but I think it's like difficult to stand out. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, for me, she kind of does stand out because she she brings like a feeling and an interpretation to her skating that, I don't know, just leaves kind of an impact with me. I think that's another thing about her that really stood out. She has a really good upper body, I notice. Yes, yeah. yeah. Lower body, not and, as and much. I think, you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> she, interesting choreography, too. Like, yeah. you know, the short, I, I feel like she she really like sold everything and you know it's like a different style to see for a junior lady right so i i appreciated that for sure yeah it's interesting her arm her jumps are huge they kind of remind me of gracie uh mm -hmm. a bit and the arms similar to the one thing that frank really seemed to try to change in gracie's jumps to make them more consistent but mm -hmm. um what did you make of the other two girls there was stanislava constantinova she did the cirque du soleil program with the stripes and the and the gloves and then there was elizabetta yes. Nugumanova, who was the Romeo and Juliet. She was first in the right. free skate with the triple loop, mm. triple loop, and, you know, coached by Mishin. So what did you make yes. of those? I remember seeing Elisabetta when um, Mishin came to the World Arena in Colorado Springs, and he brought a bunch of his students. Um, you know, she was even more tiny um, <laughs> back then <laughs> last year. Um, but she was, like, nailing that triple loop, triple loop, like nobody's business even then. So, you know, it's not... Um, surprising to see her skate well, although her reaction at the end of her program was like super cute because she looked like really excited that she had just done a clean program. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, she's, she, she to me, um, you know, she's got this sort of cute little, like she's like bopping around the rink and like doing a million triples kind of thing. Um, it's uh, certainly endearing. Um, and uh, Stanislava, um you know, I, I found her a little mess, a little less memorable than the other two. Um, personally, I, I'm more tired of Cirque du Soleil, so maybe that was why. Um, but I mean, obviously, she's got some some great uh, technical abilities as well.
I couldn't tell you what show it's from at this point. I think there are too many Cirque du Soleil shows. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I definitely yeah. couldn't tell you. <laughs> there are like 20 in Vegas. I remember when Cirque du Soleil was like so innovative. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's one Cirque du Soleil piece that everyone used. <laughs> yeah, how much it's like changed in a decade. You know, it's it's pretty funny there. I would definitely agree. Do you get excited when you see a triple loop, triple loop, like still? Does it like bring you back to like 1998? <laughs> I mean, I think it. I think it brings everyone back to 1998, who's at least our age, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, I get excited by it because you know I think there's something. Well, loop combos in general, like they're they're pretty. They look different than. I mean, obviously toe combos are pretty too, but we don't see them as much. So I think like there's something interesting um, to me about that. And also like even when you think about jumps as being part of the choreography, it's like another dynamic where it's like an interesting movement. So, uh, yeah, I definitely get excited by. Did you ever see that boy do the seven triple loops in a row on Instagram (laughs) or the half loop sow cow girl this week? I I saw. Yeah. (laughs) Those were the moments. Now let's talk about the top two men because you have Alexander (laughs) Samarin who looks like he borrowed Adam Rapon's shirt and you had Andrew Torgashev. Um, who's someone that's definitely going to be competing with Vincent probably at the, at the Grand Prix final. So what did you make of them? Yeah, I mean, uh, both had really strong skates. Um, I remember seeing Samarin uh, last year. He's, he like kind of has that Plashenko type quality where it's like high energy and, and really strong movements. Um, you know, I, I think the big thing for, you know, it was a great skate, I think, for him. Like, if he can deliver that with a little more quality, like, you know, stronger jump landings and holding positions, I think he could be, you know, I mean, he already is really, really strong, but he could even be even stronger, right? Um, and, and uh, yeah, I think you're right about Torgashev. I think, you know, he's definitely someone that we could see at the Grand Prix final. Um, it would be great if we could have, you know, three or more Americans at the Junior Grand Prix final this year. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, you know, he, uh, I really loved his short. I loved, um, you know, how much flow and edge quality he had, especially like in the step sequence. And I think, you know, he had some of that in his long, um, that, that was another like super high energy program where he was just like full on a hundred percent from beginning to end. Like I was tired just watching him do it. <laughs> yeah. And he's pretty young. It's funny. Because he was injured last year at Nationals. So the last time I remember seeing him, he was a boy that had through triple Uts. He still had mm-hmm. a double axle, and now he comes back with quads. And it's like, where yeah. have you been? So yeah. interesting. And I how- think when, when he put up that big number at Nationals when he won junior, everyone you know, was, I think, immediately saying, like, okay, but like, when's he going to get the triple axle? Yeah. Or is he going to get the triple axle in the quad? And I mean, I think he's like certainly proved (laughs) that now at this point. It's funny that you mentioned Samarin and compared him to Plashenko because the things, his triple axle really stood out how he has that hang time, that the magic. And then he followed it up by vamping in front of the judges, like full (laughs) out of getting Plashenko, like just had that moment that I think all Russians totally. And, and the, the, the celebration at the end with like the clenched fists the whole time was definitely like a Plashenko throwback. But I mean, if, if, I think especially if you're a Russian man, that's like the ultimate compliment, right? It's yeah. a Plashenko comparison. So you had Russian coaches. So like how Russian were they at the end of your performances? Like how happy were they? Were there tears? Were there like any sort of theatrics? Um, you know, I, I like have this like vivid memory of like one of my first lessons with Alex, my coach, and he told me like, I think the like some, the direct quote was like no emotion on the ice, and like what he meant <laughs> was like you should like never be too high and never be too low, right? Like meaning that if you were like an even keeled athlete, you could get more out of your training, right? Because you didn't like overreact to things being too bad or like you know celebrate too much when you need to focus and you know keep progressing. Um, and I think, you know, Alex at least was certainly like embraced that as a coach where he was, there wasn't like ever like a ton of emotion. Even when we won Junior Worlds, I think I remember him smiling, but that was <laughs> about it. Well, you also worked with another Russian woman, allegedly. And, you know, I think there's only like one person my boyfriend knows in skating, and that would be Tatiana Tarasova. And I know that you worked <laughs> with her. Describe this. What is your favorite Tatiana moment? What was it like working with her, you know? Was she I mean, marching around the ice in her boots? I guess, what was she doing? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't remember her ever wearing skates. Um, 
You know, I, we only worked with her a few times. I think like whenever we had the chance to work with her, we would like seize it. Like we would we would like hop in that minivan that Alex Vlasov had <laughs> and we would like drive across the East Coast and find Tarasova wherever she was. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't know if it was um, partly the folk, folk, folklore or, um, you know, partly just who she is and how amazing she is, but there's something about her. Like she just had like this magical touch. I remember just like, when I would work with her, like everything she said would make a huge difference. It was like every little comment, whether it was like a technical correction or like an arm movement, like all of a sudden things were like, you know, 90% better than they were the time before. She also only taught us in Russian, which was always like a little bit of a challenge for me. How but, good is your Russian? Yeah. Uh, not as good as it used to be because I never speak it anymore. But by the end of my skating with Julia, I was... I would say like fluent, at least as far as like skating terminology. Okay. Um, Al Alex was pretty much teaching us in Russian, you know, most days. So it's a little bit of a challenge too. Yeah. So I mean, how convincing was Tarasova? Like, could, would she have convinced you to wear a cross if she asked <laughs> you to? Like, would you have the like, glittery cross? Would you have done it? I guess. What could she have made you do? Um, well, I was the kind of skater who always did what I was told, so I'm pretty certain I would have done whatever she told me. <laughs> Including, like, the Evan Lysacek piano across. <laughs> Evan came in that one costume. I might have questioned it, but yeah. I, if, if she, like, put her foot down about it, I would have done it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I want to know what your picks for the season are. What is your favorite program you've seen so far? Who's your skater of the season thus far? I guess, what are you looking at? Let's start um, program. Yeah. I mean, it's so like, it's so fun at the beginning of a season because like you're like starting to see, you know, what everyone's doing, but like you still have like questions about other people. So, I mean, I think, you know, from what I've seen, um, hmm, that's a, that's a, a tricky one. You know, the, the two programs that have stood out the most to me are Adam Rippin short and Maddie and Zach's free dance, as we talked about earlier. I just, you know, they're, um, for different reasons, obviously, I just love like the sass and like ownership Adam has of his short program. And it's like, you know, that's the program only Adam can do. Like you can't put that on anybody else. Right. Yeah. And I love that. Um, and then Maddie and Zach are just so stunningly beautiful and just really exciting to see them skate so well. So I would say those are probably my two right now. I would say her, I definitely Hubble and Donahue's free dance is my program so far, but I'm really waiting for Ashley Short to the Annie Lennox, yeah, and I want to yeah. see how she's going to bring this. She did it as a show program, but she's a different <laughs> girl than she was then. So I, I'm <laughs> waiting to see what she's going to wear. Personality of the season, I think Madison Hubble, after interviewing her, is kind of who I'm excited when she's skating to push it. I'm, I'm into it. Who's your personality so far this year? <sighs> hmm, personality... I mean, I feel like I haven't like seen like a lot of different interviews where people have like showcased their personality. I mean, I think I'm always um, um, I'm always sort of like excited about. Well, I mean, currently excited about Tessa and Scott. You know, I think mm -hmm. they have always had a lot of personality on and off the ice. So I think with their comeback, it, you know, it could be really interesting the things that they have to say. And um, who's your money on Tessa and Scott or the French? Who has the advantage? Um, I love them both, but I think yeah. the French team does, um, you know, they, uh, I just love what they're doing with skating right now. And, um, I think that they do it so well, right. I, I think that that style of movement and skating will continue to be popular for several more years. And, um, I think they're, they're the best at it right now. Do you have a favorite Russian lady of the moment? Um... I would say, well, I mean, obviously Medvedeva is amazing, um, you know, world champion. Um, I, I do th I do think, um, you know, Polina Strskaya from the last JGP, she probably is the one that stands out the most to me, especially of the juniors. Okay. Now, I know that you're also, one of the things viewers don't know is you work with Catherine Hill, who did a series for us a couple years ago on movement. Yes. So tell me about how you two teamed up this program how proper Catherine is every day when she speaks to you. <laughs> yeah, tell us a little bit about what you've been doing together. Yeah, I mean, I um, aspire to be as put together as Catherine. Yeah. Um, she is um, basically like my spirit animal. 
Um, <laughs> no, I mean, I'm kidding, but Kat- Catherine is and it, I isn't are- Isn't it candlelight? Because it's like a night of movement and music and relaxation. And there's a lot going on in these couple of hours. So talk about it. Yeah. yeah so um, we, uh, we started, you know, uh, a company um, called Modern Skating. And basically what we, you know, are trying to do is like fuse, um, you know, the different dance techniques that we required, um, you know, from school and other, you know, various- things with like skating technique and our love for choreography um, and really like bring that to skaters in a way that's tangible. I think a lot of like skaters take dance but then don't know how to translate it to like actual like success in skating or like higher program components. And this is like um, something Catherine and I are both really passionate about. So um, one of the things we do the most is, you know, um, we have workshops where we've done, you know, all over the country um, and starting to do them all over the world. Um, where, you know, we have like sort of like intensives where we teach, you know, a lot of these concepts or, um, a lot of these techniques and, um, showcase them in a way that is also an experience for skaters. So like you said, like we have, you know, we use candlelight sometimes, or like we have different like light projections and we try to use like fun and interesting music, um, to, to make an impression and give the skater like something that they'll remember and be more likely to implement. Mm -hmm. Well, how can skaters get in touch with you? I know you're on Instagram. You've been on social media for a long time. Drew <laughs> underscore Meekins, right? Yes, Instagram. Yes. And I like that it's the same on both, which is... Like I know. I, I've been on it long enough that I could get both, which I think I feel like really blessed about. So, okay. yes. Yeah, it makes me feel really old. I remember the old days. <laughs> yeah. So, Hannah, what was your moment of the week overall, I guess, for this past? <sighs> um, hmm. My moment of the week... I would say that it was Miyahara and her free skate and just how stunning it was and and um, the dominant it was. Right. I'm going to go with Hubble and Donahue for the free skate, my, for the free dance, my program of the season so far. So we want to remind everyone that when you're having that moment at Nationals, just go for the big <laughs> old kiss. All right. Hold it out. She looks She's sexy. She's going for it. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>